Hi guys, it's Baniel and welcome to today's video and welcome to another WWE reaction. Since Elimination Chamber is around the corner and WrestleMania is also almost there, you guys, I wanted to know and learn more about Roman Reigns and history, especially his history with Seth freaking Rollins. And I think this is a perfect video for me to get educated. It's called House of Justice, The Shield Story, Full Career Documentary, and it is by Wrestle with Andy. So let's go and check it out, shall we? One of the most common criticisms of WWE over the last decade or so has been that they don't know how to make new stars anymore. And while there are plenty of examples of this being true, that's not to say that when Vince McMahon sets his mind to it, he isn't able to create something special out of some up-and-coming talent. In fact, nowhere will you find better evidence of that than with The Shield. Yes, in the space of a year and a half, the WWE was able to make three bona fide main eventers from scratch, with each becoming world champion before long and all continuing to dominate the promotions they currently work for. But how did they do it? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into the faction's entire run from start to finish in Hounds of Justice, The Shield Story. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's all It all starts with CM Punk. There. He was the one who needed to keep his record-breaking 434-day title run interesting in 2012, and that was why, behind the scenes, the champion had begun pitching to have a crew of hired guns acting as his backup, helping him keep the top prize around his waist. And initially, he would suggest that this trio be made up of indie stars turned WWE developmental trainees Tyler Black, John Moxley, and Chris Hero. But while Vince McMahon was happy with the first two, he just didn't see Hero as part of the group. Oh. That was why, after thinking about it for a while, the boss would instead choose the young upstart Joe Anawaii as a replacement. Okay. So now, with the three members decided upon, WWE would begin preparing them all for the main roster by changing up their looks and altering their ring names to Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns, respectively. After this, they would make their surprise debut at that November Survivor Series, That's cool. interfering they in the main cool event triple threat black. WWE title match to powerbomb Ryback through the announce table and help Punk pick up the win. Mm -hmm. Yes, while many NXT and FCW call-ups prior to this had gone through inauspicious introductions to the main roster, often having to work their way up the mid-card or suffer a series of embarrassing early defeats, it was clear that the WWE were intent on pushing their new trio of mercenaries to the moon straight away by oh, having yeah, them move right into cool. the main event scene in dominating fashion. And the newcomers would make their intentions clear further when, the night after Survivor Series, they showed up on Raw to identify themselves as The Shield, a collective mm. of outlaws who were there to rally against any injustices they saw, Me. something which would turn out to be true in the weeks that followed as they regularly interrupted other performers such as Randy Orton and Team Hell No so to lay them out for their perceived sins. Mm -hmm. Yes, it quickly became clear to the entire roster that whenever the soon-to-be iconic S.H.I.E.L.D. music hit, you'd better get the hell out of Dodge or yep. face a beatdown at their hands. And the Hounds of Justice would further add to this feeling that they were outside invaders by never appearing from the backstage area where the rest of the performers were, oh. instead only coming out through the crowd, oh. decked out in riot gear, and cutting promos that were filmed on handheld camcorders okay. from somewhere deep inside the bowels of the building. It all felt a little bit NWO, in fact, and that only helped to get them even more over with fans who instantly took to all three men as stars. It also helped that each of them had a very distinct personality and role within the group, too, as Ambrose would play the unhinged lunatic fringe, the <laughs> early de facto leader of the group, all while Rollins would act as the architect of the group, the brains oh, behind the operation, the brains. and Reigns would pick up the role of the big dog, the silent heavy who got things done. Okay. But for as over as they all were with these early segments, everyone knew that the true test would be what happened when they were put into the ring for a match. Luckily then, both Rollins and Ambrose were experienced indie performers who knew how to carry a match and, with Reigns still being a rookie at this point, they were able to work around his limitations and make him look like a star whenever he did get tagged in for the power spot at the end. But it wasn't just the main roster they would run riot over during those early days as, while well, all three men had now been called up full-time, Rollins remained the NXT champion. So with that in mind then, he would return to the black and yellow brand to defend this on a number of occasions, okay. eventually dropping it to Biggie I Langston on the January 9th, 2013 episode of the show, albeit not before The Shield had managed to make their presence felt. Back on the main roster though, the question of their alignment with CM Punk still hung in the air with this being something that the group had always denied was a thing. 
it mm. didn't make it easy for people you to believe this, this though when like they would in a bit uh so, like right now confusing and probably i'm gonna learn what happened eventually or maybe in this video itself is the fact like now we have um CM Punk actually fighting Roman Reigns and having him as an enemy and also contemplating Seth Rollins as well as an enemy and before they were a team. So what went wrong? Keenly interfere in Punk's matches throughout January, helping him to continue on as champion come the end. Hell, they would even try and take out The Rock during his title match against the champ at that month's Royal Rumble, laying waste to the people's champion there, all before Vince McMahon, who had by then figured out what was going on, restarted the bout and allowed the part-timer to finally end the lengthy reign of the voice of the voiceless. Mm. And to make matters worse, the following night on Raw, it would be revealed that Punk's manager Paul Heyman had indeed been paying The Shield to act as his hired guns the whole time with this tying up the loose end of that story and allowing the group to disassociate themselves from the now former champion going forward. Oh, but it okay. wasn't as if they needed that association anymore, as by then, yeah. the Hounds of Justice were already like firmly Punk established as one of the top new acts in the, the company, with them it's continuing nice their him. win streak from there as they beat everyone they came up against in a series of six-man tag team me, matches me, me, in me, the me. months that followed. And among Weenie. these names was the top star in the company Weenie. himself, John Cena, who The Shield believed had carried out a decade of injustice <laughs> at that point by hogging on to his main event position for so long. Eventually then, this would lead to a six-man tag at February 17th's Elimination Chamber, where The Shield would take on Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus in yet another winning effort, mm -hmm. with them proving here that when they were working as a unit, even Big Match John wasn't enough to take them down. After Three that, people. they would further Three add to their growing reputation one. by beating Randy Orton, Sheamus, and The Big Show at WrestleMania 29. All this before interrupting The Undertaker the next night on Raw with the intention of taking him out too. And that led to a six-man pitting the dead man, his brother Kane, and Daniel Bryan on the April 22nd episode of Raw, which, unsurprisingly, The Shield would win as well. Not happy with this, though, The Undertaker would compete in a rare TV singles match just four days later on SmackDown when he took on Dean Ambrose one-on-one. -on -one. And while the lunatic fringe would lose this one, it still represented a huge honor for him and a huge show of confidence in this Shield's ability to be a continued main event force going forward. So with that said, the next step seemed obvious. They had to win some gold. And this would end up happening at May 19th's Extreme Rules, as it was there that Ambrose would defeat Kofi Kingston to win the United States title. All well, elsewhere, Rollins and Reigns were defeating Team Hell No to become the WWE Tag Team Champions. Mm. Soon after that, and the Hounds of Justice would begin to align themselves with Triple H and his authority stable when they started helping Randy Orton out during his WWE title feud with Daniel Bryan. I feel like Bryan. they're all the shield. All while simultaneously they were laying waste to anyone who dares speak out against the authority. Wrestler. And with all this new power behind them then, the Shield only grew stronger as they would from there each successfully defend their titles at September 15th's Night of Champions. With okay. Ambrose defeating Dolph Ziggler here, well, elsewhere on the card, Rollins and Reigns were making quick work of the primetime players. That said, the first hints of cracks in their armor Dude, would begin to show themselves team, around this time, as it was other. then that the tag champs got into a feud with well, the Rhodes brothers, Cody. a feud that would eventually see them lose their titles to the babyfaces on the October 14th episode of Raw. So maybe this is where Cody Rhodes' history with Seth and Roman started in tag team. That's what I think. And they would suffer a number of losses after that, too, with it starting to look now like maybe mm, they weren't as invincible as they down. once appeared. Yeah. Sure, Dean Ambrose was still the U.S. champion, but he defended that so infrequently that it had become a bit of a meme by that point. Still, regardless of this, he would begin boasting of being the only member of the group who held a title then, something which started to frustrate his teammates yeah. more and more as the weeks went on. You can't do that, And brother. these growing issues would reach their lowest point at December 15th's Tables, Ladders, and Chairs pay-per-view, where called at the same event match? where they had made such a dominating in-ring debut the year prior, they now found themselves losing to CM Punk in a three-on-one handicap match after Reigns accidentally hit Ambrose with a spear towards the end of the bout. After this then, many fans speculated the end was coming and, as it would soon be revealed by the group at a later date, this had been the original plan, with management believing that the faction had run its course as from there they hoped to split them up and begin Roman Reigns' push to the position of the new face of the company. 
Three people who weren't happy with this, however, were Reigns, Rollins, and Ambrose themselves, as feeling there was still a lot of juice left in the gimmick, yeah. they collectively lobbied to Vince McMahon to keep the I group together for the time being, arguing that by splitting them up while they still had so much to give, the company was leaving a lot of money on the table. And thankfully listening to this, the boss would decide to cancel the planned breakup for the time being, allowing the Hounds of Justice to work through their issues on screen and come out of the other end even stronger as, now, it was Rollins who took on the de facto leadership role within the group for a while. So now on the same page once more, the trio would next set their sights on having a dream match with the other big faction mm, who had been making Wyatt a name Brothers. for themselves in WWE over the past year, the Wyatt Family. Yes, it was about that every fan had been waiting to see, and so, when The Shield's music hit at February 23, 2014's ah, Elimination Chamber to signal the match was up next, the roof blew off the place as everyone prepared themselves for what was about ah. to happen. Yeah, and that, despite that ultimately exciting. losing the bout on that night, the crowd yeah. reaction only served to further emphasize how over The Shield were, and how right WWE had got it with them from day one. Yes, as it turned out, the company could still make new stars, and all they had to do in order to achieve this was have them look and act like stars by winning almost all their matches and appear dominating during in-ring segments. Mm. Of course, around this time, it did start to become apparent to some fans that perhaps the reason why The Shield had been protected so much was that WWE had huge plans for Roman Reigns going forward, and this would become even clearer when, after the group abandoned the authority and turned babyface in March of that year, the big dog would begin to take more of a leadership role within the group, frequently acting as the mouthpiece then in a change from his prior stoic character portrayal. And with him at the helm then, this babyface run would see the Hounds of Justice take on the New Age Outlaws in Kane at WrestleMania 30, with them once again making quick work of their opponents here as they defeated them in just 2 minutes and 56 seconds. After that, however, they would get a far more formidable set of challengers when Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton reformed Evolution, with the two sides coming to blows at both May's Extreme Rules and June's Payback pay-per-views in two absolutely stellar matches, both of which the babyfaces would win. So it seemed like the sky was the limit for what they could achieve going forward as fan favorites then. Mm -hmm. That was why it came as such a surprise when, on the June 2nd episode of Raw, Seth Rollins would betray his brothers when he laid them both out with a steel chair, realigning himself with the authority as a heel in the process. Oh, I guess this is the crucial point, the betrayal. As his two, now former partners, were left why did to pick he betray up the pieces. Them? And oh while God, Ambrose and Reigns would remain himself? aligned afterwards, this would mark the end of the shield as mm. both men would largely go off on their own paths in the months that followed, with the lunatic fringe seeking revenge against Rollins, while elsewhere, Reigns entered into a feud with Randy Orton. Mm. But of course the faction had already done its job by then in creating three main event superstars, yeah. with Rollins yeah, ultimately winning the WWE title at the him. following year's WrestleMania. And he wouldn't be the only one to achieve this either, as at November 2015's Survivor Series, after the Architect had been forced to vacate this title due to injury, his former Shield brothers ah. would meet in the finals of a one-night tournament to determine the new WWE Champion, with Reigns ultimately coming out the victor in the end as he started his own run at the top. Seven months after that, and Ambrose would finally get his run as the champ too, when he cashed in his Money in the Bank contract at that year's titular show to complete the set. And this night, as it happened, would be even more special, as it would be the very one where all three S.H.I.E.L.D. members held the belt within 10 minutes of each other after Reigns had walked in as the champion, only to lose to Rollins, who then immediately lost to the Lunatic Fringe <laughs> after cool. his impromptu cash-in at the close Dad, of the show. Yeah. Following this, we would get the triple threat match between the trio at July 24, oh, 2016's cool. Battleground pay-per-view, where, after a hard-fought wow. battle, Ambrose would come out on top. And while many felt that the inevitable return bout should have been a WrestleMania main event, this would mark the only time to date that all three men faced off on the main roster. Mm, Still, okay. even if each of them were now in the midst of thriving singles runs, given how popular and successful the stable had been, fans would constantly ask WWE about the possibility of a Shield reunion. And oh. come the summer of 2017, they would finally get what they wanted, because it was at this point that Rollins, who had since turned babyface once more, began trying to mend fences with Ambrose. Okay. And despite initially being hesitant to trust him again, eventually the lunatic fringe nice. would forgive his brother, with this leading to the two teaming up Everybody once more to take on the bar at that August SummerSlam, with them not only beating the heel duo there, but also winning the Raw tag team titles from them. 
Meanwhile, as this was going on, Roman Reigns was embroiled in a heated feud with The Miz. More importantly than that, though, he was going through one of the worst instances of audience backlash in memory as, despite WWE having spent the last three years trying to push him as the top babyface in the company, the big dog had been wildly rejected at every turn, and as a result, was being booed out of every building he appeared in. Mm. So when The Miz aligned himself with The Bar to help him take down Reigns, it felt like the perfect time for the struggling star to bring his old friends back into the fold too, with this serving the dual purpose of helping him to even the odds, while also, from a management perspective, helping him to get over with the fans again. That was how, on the October 9th, 2017 episode of Raw, the big dog would come out to confront The Miz and The Bar, with him from there quickly introducing oh, the rest of The Shield as his backup shield. and confirming the reunion. Oh. Sadly though, like with all S.H.I.E.L.D. reunions after this, so a curse would seemingly befall the trio, as mm. before they could get in the ring to take on the five-man unit of The Miz, The Bar, Braun Strowman, and Kane at October 22nd's Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, Reigns would catch the mumps, with this forcing the company to pull him from the match at the last minute and replace him with Kurt Angle <laughs> instead. And while seeing Angle compete in a WWE ring again for the first time for over a decade was certainly mm. a nice treat for fans, That's fun, it yeah. wasn't what they really wanted that night. Aww. No, they would have to wait until November's Survivor Series for that, okay. as it was then that The Shield would finally come together to take on and defeat The New Day. Still, by then, much of the spark of the reunion had already faded, and to make matters worse, a month later, Dean Ambrose would suffer a tricep injury that put him out of action mm. for the foreseeable future with this marking Sad. a limp end to things for the time being. Yeah. Yes, while Reigns and Rollins would remain semi-aligned going forward, they never referred to themselves as a shield, and they rarely actually teamed up. In fact, it wouldn't be until Ambrose came back in August of 2018 that things would start up once again, as it was then that, with the Architect now the Intercontinental Champion and the Big Dog the Universal Champion, the three Blood Brothers decided to pool their resources once more, with this ultimately helping Reigns defend off the attempts of Braun Strowman to take his belt away from him in the weeks that followed. Okay. After that, they would hit the ring as a team again when they took on the trio of Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre at the Australian Super Showdown show on October 6th. That said, this marked the end of the reunion again as, tragically, Aww. the big dog would come out on the October 22nd episode of Raw to announce that he was battling leukemia, and oh, as yeah. such, would be taking an indefinite period of time yeah, away from the ring sad. so as to try and beat the illness. While he was gone then, the company would add a new wrinkle to the story by having Ambrose turn heel on Rollins, with this allegedly only being saved from being one of the most tasteless angles in WWE mm. history after the lunatic fringe refused to use a line about Roman's cancer to get heel heat, with him claiming that if he'd said it, it would have cost the company sponsors. Yes, yeah. while fans had been begging for a version cool. of the psycho heel Ambrose on the main roster for some time now, hoping that it would reinvigorate his stale character that had become little more than a wacky uncle by then, stories like this should have been an early cause for concern. And these concerns ended up being merited in the weeks that followed, in fact, as WWE would spectacularly botch the heel turn by having the former CZW madman take part in silly comedy skits that saw him oh come no. out to the ring in a gas mask Get telling out. the audience that they smelled. And oh, this, it so seems, mean. was the final straw for Ambrose, as when his contract <sighs> came due in January of 2019, contract. he neglected to sign a new one arguing that he was tired of the company's terrible creative direction and that he had not been happy in his role for yeah, some time. Yeah, they didn't really give him good so, creative realizing the end was near, WWE decided to have That's one sad. final Shield farewell reunion when Reigns returned to the ring cancer-free soon after Yay! this, with the three That's coming together once more on the March 4th, 2019 episode of Raw, and from there beating the team of Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and Baron Corbin at Fastlane later that How month. How a company can ruin you, man. After that, the company would promote the special WWE WWE Network event The Shield, the final chapter on April 21st, where, in the main event that night, the Hounds of Justice would defeat McIntyre, Lashley, and Corbin one more time in what ended up being Ambrose's last match yeah. with the company. And given how much success he's now having reverting back to his old John Moxley gimmick in AEW, it seems unlikely that we'll oh. ever see the Shield together again at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's that in said, AEW, I didn't know that. looking back at how cursed the reunions have always appeared to be, maybe this isn't a bad thing, and maybe instead it's better to remember things as they were that first time when, over an 18-month period, three relative unknowns managed to turn themselves into the top stars in the With the help the of industry. CM Punk. 
And that star power with the help of big stars. Too, with Moxley on top in AEW. And the company giving Reigns them an having opportunity. having a career high run on SmackDown. And yeah. Rollins acting as one of Raw's primary heels. It seems like, together or not, The Shield will continue to run wrestling for the foreseeable future. Always ready to deliver justice whenever it is needed. Yee. And always as a brotherhood, even if company lines separate them. Well, guys, what oh my did God, you think what of the a video? Cool video? Let us know in the comments below. I loved it. It was so informative, easy to learn. The information were not all over the place. Like you really followed a line and like a timeline and didn't add so many infos and facts here and there. Like I learned everything. Like I literally memorized almost everything that happened there during their career and i'm glad that i know better now about the history especially about uh, seth rollins and um uh, freaking rollins and roman reigns because that is kind of important kind of important i still don't know why did he turn against them and uh he did mention to cody rhodes in the last uh time they were talking is that he didn't like how he turned how roman reigns persona turned and he wanted to prove a point so I just don't know what he is really talking about and I don't know if that is related to something during the SHIELD days or is it something after and we have a couple of years of span between those days and what is now to, to, to figure out at least I need to figure that out or you can help me in the comments down below but that is it for today's video thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and see you on the 24th of February on uh, Elimination Chamber live on my YouTube channel have a lovely day see you bye bye